Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is World Dissecting Day 2019. We're here in Bogota, Colombia, and I'm honored to be here with Dr. Escar Guarín, who is a Colombian doctor, but also is now currently working and practicing in Iowa. Good morning, Escar. Good morning, Jonathan. I'm happy to be here. So this morning, we're going to talk a little bit about the very basics, which is what is a vasectomy? So let's just get, jump right into it. In very simple terms, what is a vasectomy? Well, vasectomy is nothing but the disruption, the disconnection of the testicles with the rest of the tubules so that we don't allow the sperm to make it to the semen. That's it. And, and that way, well, what happens is the man is not going to be able to impregnate the woman. So how does it work? Just give me a show well, a little bit. And, and if you guys can give me a close up here to some of the instruments, that would be terrific. So this is a, a, a anatomical model. And what I want to make sure that everybody understands is that we're not going to touch certain areas. We're not touching this far here, which is part of the part of the uh, the myth that many men have regarding you know losing their ability to have an erection. We're going to be working down here where the scrotum is. So the scrotum harbors the uh, testicles. And with the testicles, we have some tubules. Now, if you can give me again a little bit of a close-up here. So this is a good representation of how the tubules are, are going to look like. This is nothing but a latex uh, tubing that we use for some, some uh, pinching and instruction purposes. But anyways, we grab this underneath the skin with this little clamp here. And this clamp, I don't know if you can see it from there, but this clamp actually has a ring on the tip. We bring it to the skin, we poke a tiny little hole with this. Uh, let's see if you can get it. Oh, better. Uh, up right there. We use this, which is sharp, and poke right here in the center, a tiny little hole, and then through that hole, then we get this tubule out. And then we're gonna cut it with scissors, and we're gonna burn one of the segments, send it back in, do the same thing with the other one, and that's it. Ten minutes. Now, uh, it's so easy that, in fact, you've had your own vasectomy done. I actually, I actually, two, almost two years ago, I did my own vasectomy. And uh, uh, people might think, oh, well, you're crazy. Why do you do your own vasectomy? The reason why I did it was be precisely because of this, because it was very simple. I wanted to get it done. I wanted to get it done uh, with one of the two people that I trust the most, you know, one guy lives in Quebec in Canada and the other guy lives in Tampa, Florida. They were too far from me. And they said, well, I do this all the time. I'm gonna get it done. And I called my wife on a Friday night, which sounds extremely lame because it sounds like I have nothing else to do on a Friday night. And, uh, and, and I did it, two sets of uh, instruments and I did it. It took me probably five more minutes because it was an awkward position, but I got it done. And uh, Monday morning, I was going up and down the hospital stairs and no problems. This is a very, very quick and simple procedure. So you said it was five minutes longer. <laughs> How long would it normally take? 10, uh, 10 minutes. It takes 10 minutes. I mean, the whole preparation, you know, I usually take some time with my patients because I bring them over. I want to pamper them. I want to talk to them. I want to see how they're doing. If they have any questions, usually my, my personal practice, I take between uh, 25 to 30 minutes in the, the whole time in the office. But the actual procedure, once I take them to the procedure room and I start the procedure, takes five, <coughs> 10 minutes. That's it. it is it, uh, you know, you're saying it's simple, but for men it's not that simple. Like it's a big decision and it's a well, big impact. Technically, actually the technique is simple, but the decision of permanent sterilization is a complex one. It's something that people have to think about. The thing is, once they have gone through that process of making the decision, the actual procedure is simple. So the complexity of making the decision is perhaps the, 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 the thing that they have to think the most. Uh, but once they have made the decision, the actual technique is quick and simple. Does that make part of your work as a doctor, kind of psychology as well? Like, How do you help them or how do you make sure that the patient really is ready for the procedure? Let me put it this way. Uh, it doesn't matter how what the person does. You know, I'm not in a position as a physician to judge what my patient is, who, how he is, who he is, what he does. But if you think about uh, the, the fact that people are different, people do different things, some people are nicer, some people are kinder, some people are meaner than others. But when, make, when they make the decision of having a vasectomy, they're, make, they're doing something good. They're making the decision because, because uh, they love their partner, because they don't want to put a burden on somebody else for the pregnancy, 
because they want to save the planet. So at the end of the day, these guys are making a good decision. So I actually enjoy the fact that I, I happen to be the witness of that great decision that the patient is making at the time. And yes, there's a component of, of psychology there because I, I personally love knowing why is that they're doing the vasectomy at the time. Because many of them will tell you, well, I've been scared for two years thinking about doing the vasectomy. And, and I finally made the decision because a friend of mine came to you and told me that it was super simple. Now, you were, we know that for some men, they're not so into getting a vasectomy. What's the most common myths or misconceptions men have that you encounter that make them resistant to actually making a choice to get a vasectomy? One of the, uh, perhaps one of the saddest things is, it's not my problem. You know, you find that answer. It's not my problem, I'm not supposed to be the one making the decision, and that's because culturally, worldwide, we have dumped the responsibility of contraception onto women. The other things that we find is, you know, I'm gonna lose my ability to have an erection, I'm not gonna have the same, same sexual desire, I'm, not, I'm gonna lose my stamina, I'm gonna lose my strength. And that is not true. Those are myths that we absolutely know uh, are not going to happen, things that are not going to happen to the patient. So we find a lot of that. Are people, after the, after the vasectomy, you're saying their quality of their erection or their ability to please their partner or to receive their own pleasure doesn't change? Does no, nothing no. changes. It doesn't. And if you think about it, uh, once you have a vasectomy, once you have been cleared, once you have had your sperm analysis checked and there's a no sperm in your semen, the patient actually can have a better sexual life. I mean, I don't have the data to support that, but it's, it's, it, you, don't have the, you don't need data for that. Oh, it's a no-brainer. If you have the peace of mind that you're not gonna get somebody else pregnant, right? If you have a partner and partner with whom you don't need to use any additional uh, contraception, you don't have to use condoms because it's your per permanent partner, you will have a better sexual life anyways because the peace of mind of not getting her pregnant is gonna make you have more fun. You mentioned about the pleasure of sexual, how quickly after a vasectomy is it safe to have sex and can you just start right off or do you need to wait or how does it work? So the, the American Urological Association doesn't talk necessarily about safety afterwards and they don't have the data but the recommendation, the expert opinion is wait about a week. You know. Five to seven days is okay. It does not, it, it, having sex or having an ejaculation rather is not going to mess up the surgery. It's not gonna damage the surgery. So it many times is have sex when you feel better. You know, the recovery time is the first 48 hours. Some men go back and have sex during the first three, uh, after the first three to five days. But in general, the recommendation is five to seven days. And you, you don't have to worry about birth control at that point? Or oh, absolutely, you do have to because uh, as, I call, as I tell my patients, they are still dangerous afterwards. And I know the patient has still some sperm. Sperm actually lives off of, lives off of the um, uh, prostate and seminal vesicles secretion. So they can live there for weeks. So the patient actually has to uh, use contraception for 12 weeks at least and or 20 ejaculations. That's a recommendation by the American Urological Association. So 12 weeks of condoms, 12 weeks of birth control pills if they were using that, or the IUD that the patient's partner was using. Because you could potentially have a pregnancy. The failures that we see many times have to do with the fact that the patient did not use contraception afterwards. You should not consider yourself sterile until we tell you so. That's what we tell. And how do you know? Like, how do you know? The example, we, and it's a little uncomfortable for some patients because it's such an intimate thing, but it's like getting blood, basically. You give us a sample of semen, uh, we put it under the microscope, and we literally count how many sperm we see. And at the end of the day, what we want to see is zero. We want to see nothing. Great. Um, I was just also wondering um, in terms of, of, like, so you can go back, sexual pleasure doesn't change, you're able to, you, and, and you don't have to worry, but it doesn't affect your ability in terms of if, of your safe sex, you still need to wear a condom. If, in what circumstances would you still recommend the condom? It doesn't protect you against diseases. Well, I, absolutely, you, and that's a very good question because there should not be the impression that, you know, after a vasectomy, you're good to go and, and you don't have to protect yourself. You have to protect yourself against sexually transmitted infections, sexually transmitted diseases. This keeps you from getting somebody pregnant but it doesn't keep you from getting HIV, it doesn't keep you from getting syphilis, it doesn't keep you from getting 
gonorrhea or chlamydia, you have to wear condoms, especially if you have multiple sexual partners. It will not, you know, leave children all over the place, but you can actually catch and spread sexual transmitted diseases. So you have to wear condoms if you are not in a committed relationship. Uh, my final question is, I think a question a lot of men have is about the reversibility of the procedure. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the, first of all, I, as I always tell my patients, if you're thinking about having a vasectomy, thinking that in the future you just would reverse it, that is not a good idea. You know, there's the slightest doubt of, of whether or not you want to reverse it in the future, then you shouldn't do it. You know, you should have a, a very, uh, you have, you should be very determined with your decision about having a vasectomy because it's a permanent thing. However, it could be reversed. And the reversibility of the procedure depends on how long it's been since the time you had the vasectomy. You know, the longer you go, the lower the chances of you being successful. Now, it doesn't mean that because they can connect the tubes again, you will cause a pregnancy. That's another kind of measure of success with the reversibility. So, and in, uh, on top of that, the reversibility is extremely expensive. So without the guarantee, you know, the success rate could be anywhere between 30 to 70%. So it's a huge gap and it's a, it's a bargain in, in many cases when you've waited a long time. So the message should be, if you're making the decision of a vasectomy, is because you're certain you don't want to have any more children in the future. Okay, so you made your decision, you'd like to get a vasectomy. How do you find a doctor? Like, how can you find the doctor that's best for you for this procedure? Well, in, in, in different countries, things are different. Uh, in the United States, for example, about uh, 80%, 75 to 80% of the physicians who uh, practice vasectomies are urologists. And the reminder in the United States is um, a, a mixture of mainly family physicians and general surgeons. There's a very, very small fraction of gynecologists who actually do this. In, in um, our Ireland, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, mainly uh, family physicians, general practitioners will, will, call, will do the procedure for you and will do it in an outpatient setting. Um, there are interesting examples, for, exa in, 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 for example, Guatemala and Ethiopia, where 75% or more of the vasectomies are done by gynecologists. So they, there are multiple, multiple uh, clinicians who can do it. And for those who are watching, you can go to the directory that we have at worldvasectomyday.org uh, and see if in your area you have a provider, you have a clinician that can do it. You know, it's, it's easily accessible and, and you can find it if, if you have somebody around that can do the procedure for you. Great, well thank you so much Dr. Guarin awesome. and thank you everybody. That's our lesson 101 in what is a vasectomy.